Hello, I'm Steve the Impaler. And I'm Andre the Impaler. Don't you hate it when green mist makes its way through your window and makes you so unbelievably horny that you ride around in bed? You might need to make a call to your local impalers. For a limited time only, you can hire both of us for a double impaling at a discounted rate. <laughs> the Impaler Brothers will take a stab at it. Hello, spoopy people. It's your boy, Dre. I'm here with Steve, probably, maybe. Hello. <laughs> we already did that. That was the intro. We already we already did that. Uh, yeah, right. Well, <laughs> I can't maintain that whole night. Can you give me a, a good, I, I want to suck your blood? I want to suck your blood. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> You're blah. <laughs> oh, boy. As you can probably tell already, we are here to talk about Dracula, and then we're going to talk about Dracula. I know it's complicated now, but if you stick around, you'll you'll catch on. <laughs> yep. So 1992, Bram Stoker's Dracula, that one, and then 1979, Dracula, a one that's pretty forgotten about and i didn't even know about till recently but that'll be later first we want to talk bram stoker's dracula just because the between the two of us i think it's a movie we really admire in the same way even when we like the same movie steve it seems like we might like them for varyingly different reasons i think on this one we are samesies i feel that's about right yeah based on our chats the chats that the audience aren't privy to and that you're referencing here. <laughs> yes, I yeah, I know, but I, I don't want to, you know, sell the whole Dracula's castle and right right this second. Why don't we but you know, I wasn't old enough for Dracula ninety two in ninety two. Were, 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 were you, Andre? Not really. I mean I was ten years old, so that's not really old enough to watch a R rated Dracula movie like this. And oh boy, is it rated R R R. The marketing for this movie, though, is what I remember because it was huge. Like, you couldn't avoid it. I don't know if they expected the movie to be big. I guess they did, but they sure treated it like it was. I remember seeing so many ads for even like the SNES and Sega CD games at the time. Like, oh, by, by the way, remember when they used to art market R rated movies to kids like us? Hey, kids, you want to play Terminator or Aliens, the game? <laughs> Fucking Platoon or uh, Hunt for Red October on your NES and Game Boy. <laughs> I thought that was so weird that there was a Hunt for Red October game. <laughs> Not only was there a Hunt for Red October game on the Game Boy, it, it, it's, excuse me, it supported the link cable. So if you and a friend had two Game Boys, uh, two copies of Hunt for Red October, you could, you know, Go for sub to sub <laughs> combat long before uh, Steel Diver came out <laughs> twenty years the, some odd years later. <laughs> I thought you were gonna I like. Can you imagine a print ad in EGM saying two friends can hunt for Red October together? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> um, yeah, but that was a thing. Anyway, I didn't see Bram Stoker's Dracula, Dracula ninety two until a network was showing it like AMC or some network that doesn't give a shit that doesn't censor anything or whatever. And I was like, this movie is fucking wild. Um, so I bought the Blu-ray and the rest, like, and I don't know, like 2015 and the rest is history. Yeah. I'm a bit younger than Andre, as I like to keep bringing up in order to make me not feel as old, but good luck. Yeah. Good luck. But as I've mentioned here and on probably the old creative endeavor, my mother worked for Blockbuster, and there was a big push for this as a rental, and not just the, the movie and the games. I remember a long time ago, the Angry Video Game Nerd did his video on the Sega CD, and he did however long on Bram Stoker's Dracula, but for my own personal whatever, 
I looked it up again, and oh my god, if you really want some rotoscoped Keanu punching bats in the face, boy, have I got a video game for you. That's all I remember from it. Him rotoscoped and some very shitty movie footage. I like when I I think I was looking at um what's that channel I like? Nintendo Complete. I think I'd love to watch the the plays on there because his video his video is crisp and whatever. It's excellent. Anyway, I just remember some weird like mode not mode seven ish background because it wasn't capable of that, but like the clouds were like, you know, they do the dramatic stuff where it's going across the sky, the clouds, you know what I mean? Like really fast. I feel like that was an effect. It was in the cloud void kicking bats. There was some kind of void going on because sometimes in another video I was watching, he was jumping across a platform. He landed on the platform and then he fell through the platform to his death. So (laughs) there there was some kind of weird Dracula void going on there. Anyway. (sighs) Yeah. But, you know, I'd eventually watch the DVD as a, Older-ish person I, by borrowing the DVD from my local public library long after the relevance passed, and you hated it. No, you loved it. No, why would I? Why would I hate Bram Stoker's Dracula? Because you like, were like, this is far too horny and sexy. Click, and you just hit the eject on your uh, Blu-ray player. I would do no. Well, no, it, it was a DVD player. It wasn't the Blu-ray was not quite invented yet. This was back when Dracula still roamed the earth. Okay, <laughs> Dracula was Dracula was still a bit of a cautionary tale. You might Dracula's would still be wandering around hot topics sometimes. So you know there was that little threat going around. But were you, were you ever were you ever Dracula for Halloween? I was like three times. You know, I, I my mom dug up some photos the other week, and I was a vampire once. I don't know if I was Dracula for sure, or if I just had too much moose in my head because that was the style at the time, or. Yes. <laughs> no. Any if you're dressing up as a vampire is as a kid, you're you're fucking Dracula. Um, have you ever read the book? Because no, this I, this this movie assumes you have, but no, I'm a goddamn culturalist slob. Just go ahead and rescind my Algonquin Roundtable membership card. I know. Just just, <laughs> ter, just you know, pout and turn your snooty nose up in my direction. I'm I'm just a fucking slob. I've seen a bunch of Dracula <laughs> movies, uh, the original, and however many others along Son of Dracula, and however many others along the way. But no, I didn't read the book. I'm okay. sure the book is better. You snobs at home, tell me in the comments. It is not better and i don't care what the snobs at home say in the comments because it's i've read the book most of it and it's really dry you know the stuff like in the first half of the movie where keanu reeves as john harker with his bad accent is like it has been six more weeks blah 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 all that's in the book <laughs> like and there's so many journal entries and you got to read them all like it is it's something so you're pretty much just begging for Dracula to come kill you while you're reading it. Yeah. It's like, can you just suck my blood already? Or don't you want to suck my blood while I read this book about you? I, I it is no surprise at all that every Dracula movie is an adaption because nobody would ever depict this book straight up. Now, with that said, Dracula 92 is actually the most faithful thing I've seen to the book. But I guess we can get to that a bit later. But it's just like it is interesting how close they stuck to it, whereas like almost nothing does. And for a reason. So I guess to have a look at, you know, how it did with all that fucking advertising back then, because there was a lot of fucking advertising in 1992. 215.9 million off a 40 million dollar budget. And a 6.7 average on what we call Rotten Tomatoes now, but clearly the audience loved it. Um, Some of the audience loved it. I mean, I don't think mainstream audiences loved it. You and me love it. I guess we are considered audience. But I think that's why this movie is just not talked about is because everyone went to see it because it was such a big deal. And all most people came out of it like, oh, <laughs> you know, I don't not us. If we were, I don't know. 32 in 1992 oh my god we'd be so old now i think we would have came out of this being like this is the best movie we've ever seen i think just to set this off i think you should read the roger ebert quote because it is exactly how i feel about this movie 
Yeah, it's pretty much how I'm feeling too. So he, there was a lot of narrative problems that he does point out and he immediately hand waves them all by saying, I enjoyed the movie simply for the way it looked and felt that you agree, right? Because yes. that is exactly my assessment. I, we it, like from the top here, we should say we'll never go into this saying like this is a narrative masterpiece because it's kind of a narrative mess. You stick that close to the book, you get exactly what's coming to you. But it's so great to look at, and that's why you're here. But to, to, to further like the audience thing, I really don't remember anyone talking about it. Like, I look okay, I wasn't allowed to see Basic Instinct either, right? Probably from the same year, but I remember everyone talking about it. I don't remember anyone talking about Dracula, except its own commercials. I think, well, for me, advertising would have been more the uh, line of reference for me just because, you know, I'm smaller, so... We can't talk about Sadie Frost's best in front of the children. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can talk about that in front of anybody. Well, we're going to talk about it in front of each other right now. And because we're an audio podcast, it's not talking about it in front of you, the listener. <laughs> yes, we're talking. We're talking to you, not about you. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know why I said that. Especially since we're not nearby you. <laughs> can we? Let's start at the beginning. I really, we have got to talk about this intro because we're not going to do our usual play by play because guys, you know what a Dracula is, right? If you don't know what a Dracula is, turn this off. We'll be here when you get back, watch a Dracula and then come back. Okay. So (laughs) the intro to this Dracula, most of the interpretations, they skip the historical Vlad the Impaler angle to the history of Dracula, but Guys, they they dive into this with stakes that could be its own fucking movie, and you oh get. Oh my god! Tell me I'm wrong, and you get. You, you're not, and you get all the examples of what we're going to get in the story proper. Between the lavish costumes, you look at his fucking armor, and it's like, look, it's like metal that looks like a ripped, like the ripped skin off, and it's just his muscle underneath. <laughs> like, like what was? It's not, it's highly impractical. But it looks cool. The only better armor I've seen in a movie recently is Dynasty Warriors, honestly. (laughs) I mean, you got these beautiful set pieces, even though even it's a fucking war at the beginning and everything's supposed to be desolate. But you got these dank castles where you you got the uh, his wife waiting and the the guy keeps a lot of priests in under his care for whatever reason, (laughs) you know, narrative reasons. But there's a twilight by Matt Painting Battlefield where they're like where they're doing the uh, Doggy Kong Country Returns silhouette effect 20 <laughs> years before that was a thing. So I mean, but you know it actually looks cool and it's not overplayed yet. It lo- it really looks good here. I that's your reference point a game I I'm makes trying me to give one for the children. <laughs> I, the ch- the children aren't allowed to listen to this. <laughs> Okay. We, we know at least we, 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 we know at least one person ten years younger than us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Oh, I thought you meant like children. Children. Anyway, I think what we're getting at is that the practical effects in this movie are fucking crazy, and it is shown to us in the first five minutes through this intro, like you said, with the puppets. And I don't know if that's animatronic is the right word. Whatever you want to say is crazy looking. And it gives you a feel of like, even in 1992, where you're liable to just do that with like some sort of careful, like even hand drawn animation or whatever that looks kind of real or something because it's just silhouetted. This is some wild shit, Steve. Yeah, there's this line between between sexuality and brutality across the movie. It's already it's broken. Forget about it being thin. It's broken. Because in that same silhouette, he's stabbing guys. There's that one dummy he throws on the pike. <laughs> to that, really emphasize the point, but the end, like with the, the, the cross, when he finally like gets. And then, and then he comes back and he's he's renouncing humanity. And, he's, and he just stabs that cross. And then the blood comes out a little. And then it comes out a lot. It's like, holy shit, this movie, Andre. <laughs> it's. It's almost campy, right? Almost. But it works like in a good way, camp. I don't know what else you would have done if you were going to do this. It's 
that music swell though at the end as the blood is gushing out and you know she's uh Elizabeta, whoever's dead and then he that that swell and then the title card appears Bram Stoker's Dracula that music is so over the top it is campy and over the top but I would not have done this any other way I'm not saying they should have I'm just saying like I love that they leaned into it and I feel like that sets the tone for the people who probably wouldn't like this because they might be like they'll see this intro and be like oh no <laughs> but Look, some some 80 year old guy in 1992 who saw Bela Lugosi. Ah! <laughs> that's what I always think of. That's exactly <laughs> what I always think of. Some guy like that's what I thought of when I saw Man of Steel, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. So insulting to Superman, right? I was imagining some 74 year old man in there. Oh, it's Superman, you know, thinking of like the late 70s, early 80s Superman. That is a good Superman to think of. Yeah, and then going to see this, being like, oh, no, <laughs> right? Like, that's what I, but that's in a bad way, obviously. This Dracula would be in a good way. This doesn't exactly appeal to the sen- the old-fashioned sensibilities in a good way, because I think it's safe to say Dracula as Gary Oldman is fucking incredible, right? That's what, well, you don't think like an old person, older person at the time would see like, that's old Hollywood shit, right? Like those kind of performances, especially that kind of Dracula. What Gary Oldman did in this movie is insane. It's Oscar worthy. Have you have you ever heard of an Oscar worthy Dracula before? This was I mean, I know he wasn't nominated. We looked it up, but like, boy, he should have been. I'm not the kind of movie watcher to go for performances. Usually I'm not that kind of person. I'm more of a visual arts kind of person i'm more and this movie has that too i'm not usually like an actor's actor kind of person i understand it when i watch this that's for sure because gary oldman is that good if there's any reason to watch this movie it's him and everyone remembers that sort of new dracula style right like the the hair like the 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 two the parted hair that's white and and poofy it wasn't that in the book, technically. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I read since I read the book. I'm, I was asking you as a book reader, but see, that's that's the other thing. Dr- Dracula is very embedded into the cultural zeitgeist. Even if you didn't follow my instructions and go and and, and go saw a Dracula, you all have an idea of what a Dracula is, right? Oldman knows this. Everyone else that made this movie knows this. The pretext is gone. Oldman is a very horny Dracula. <laughs> Dracula is a horny character, really, but... But he's a very, very horny Dracula. <laughs> Everything he's doing, whether we're sticking a head on a pike or eating a chicken with young Keanu Reeves or just signing the parchment to his new dank castle, is just <laughs> oozing sex. And he's not even a vamp- outed as a vampire yet in any of those scenes. And it's not even just that. I, even though he's like, hamming and sexing it up he's still acting all the way through capital a so that lament in that earlier scene when the priest tells him his wife is dead and condemned and that hope he felt when he saw when our writer's pick is like yeah we can we can make this work it just it feels real and as desperate as anything else in that performance and that's what i felt made any of that work yeah I got nothing to add. You you said it all. He is fantastic. However, there is something. If anyone knows this movie for anything nowadays, it's something unfortunate, which is the entirety of Keanu Reeves. Because Steve, he is so bad. From the first line, right? The first line he spoke. He wasn't even facing the camera yet. Weren't you like, <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> Even back then, I, I'm, I'm, guys, the, the accent is more Pennsylvania than Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I, I know we need the one dumbass to connect Dracula to England. And sure, Keanu Reeves, uh, fresh off his uh, tenure from Bill and Ted, is as good a patsy as any, but... It almost sounds like he is Ted and he got warped back in time and he's just trying to fit in as 
as Ted try like, like so if I uh, make him sign these papers, maybe I can go back to my own time. Yeah, we'll just we'll play it cool. <laughs> I he's so bad. His face when he when the, when they ate the baby when the when the naked ladies ate the baby. Where, where the fuck did they get that baby? <laughs> but they, did, did Francis Ford? Where one? Where the fuck did they get the baby? Two? Why are they feasting on the baby? They could feast on anything. I guess it's just for shock value. Three? Francis Ford Coppola knew he was bad, so he zoomed in on Keanu's face doing that, just because like it, it was like the only time he actually had any emotion. Think about okay. Because every scene between Gary Oldman and Keanu is insane from the get go. Right. By the way, I love that Keanu rides up to the castle. And speaking of things that are in the book that they don't explain, he gets in the headless horseman uh, fucking thing. I don't know. It's not the headless horseman. You know what I mean? Like some unknown driver of the of this horse carriage. And then they drive through some blue flame as they get up to the gate. Just blue flame going up into the sky in in waves that's not explained at all no and then like it just happens then it's like okay whatever and then he gets in dracula's castle and then like there's no mystery to it dracula's just standing there he's just there <laughs> hello keanu welcome to and the keanu <laughs> might as well <laughs> yeah it's just like what kind of name is that in the year of our lord 1897 <laughs> oh come on if someone keanu was an old ass name there's no way like i don't know anyway i don't know either but the point is immediately into the movie gary oldman and keanu reeves he, oldman is blowing him off the screen with acting and Keanu's just kind of there. Like you remember the part where uh, Gary Oldman is doing the clash of Dracula thing, like climbing up the side of the, the castle or whatever. And Keanu just looks out the window, sees him doing that. And he's just like, okay, it serves no real purpose at all. It serves no real purpose at all. And he's also like, has a reaction to it. He's not like shocked or being like, what the hell is going on? He's just like, Oh, he can do that. He's like me in the year of our Lord 2022. Okay, he's climbing the wall. We just make him sign the paper and then I will leave. (laughs) Yeah, like he's just he's totally trying to get him out of there. But like you remember the scene where Keanu's shaving and he cuts himself. And of course, Dracula appears because blood. And he's like, oh, you've cut your neck here. Let me try. (laughs) And he's like behind Keanu Reeves, holding his head gently and like shaving his neck while saying weird shit. And Keanu's just like, "Okay, whatever. Nothing weird about this at all. (laughs) Yeah, nothing weird about this at all. I know the homoeroticism is implied, but I feel like if this movie came out today, they would have leaned into that a lot more. Well, here in 1992, where this Dracula is just not ready for that kind of relationship. I mean, <laughs> he tried. We, we go to the asylum a few times where we see Renfield, th- this thrall he has, played by Tom Waits, and he's a lovesick puppy at the pound. He, <laughs> he shouts about being promised immortality, eats a few ro- roaches and bugs, and we never really come back to this until the end when he does the same thing. We the world was just not ready for uh, bisexual Dracula. I mean, I feel like Francis Ford Coppola was, but <laughs> probably he, he not was, the audience. The the they, he was probably vetoed. Um, but oh, speaking of that chicken at dinner, it was nice of Dracula to serve Keanu Reeves like the perfectly baked entire chicken that Simon Belmont came by and whipped out of the wall before like game over. Well, well you know it's. Uh... He's got a bunch of brick ovens in the house, and that's what Simon's whipping every time he comes over. <laughs> so the, we, the back so, of the, the back of brick ovens. Okay, so they just happen to be. That's that's why they're perfectly cooked every time, and that's why they're not visible to the player when you whip them because it's the back of it. There's there's like a chef and a, there's like a skeleton and a chef's head on the other side. Go, mine souffle. <laughs> <laughs> He's 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 just mad that dinner is ruined for for the seventeenth time that night. <laughs> Skeletons talking is one of the most delightful things in cinema, isn't it? It's great. Talking skeletons are the best, especially when you consider that they really shouldn't be able to. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of delightful, depending on the type of person you are, this is the most horny monster movie ever. Like it is 
so it's, horny. It, it's not without precedent. The classic movie monsters, not just Dracula, even Wolfman, the mummy, and even Frankenstein, they're all incredibly horny when you dissect them to their core. Look at look at all that hair. Look at all those bandages. And then look at all the daddy issues Frank, that Frankenstein's monsters got. I mean... <laughs> And Dracula was always the horniest among them. And this has to be the horniest Dracula. These things like he's mine as hammy as, as hammy as, it, is as hammy as it's passionate, but it's not just Dracula. Everyone's looking for some. Oh, when the, movie. when the, when the three naked, uh, uh, Medusa ladies were to seducing Keanu Reeves and he, and he busts in there like that. He's mine. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh, I didn't know you wanted me like that. Drac. <laughs> you should have said something when you were you were shaving me seductively like five minutes ago. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? <laughs> he, he's got that pit of thralls he's turned over the years. You've got you've got Winona Ryder and Sadie Frost as our Mina and Lucy in this movie, and they're so horny they're just sneaking totally friendly and then platonic kisses in the hedge maze round back of their little villa there. <laughs> And and even Van Helsing is getting way too excited for blood transfusion in a way that could only be described as needs helped, man. I, I just I thought the hedge maze thing was wild just because it seemed like they were always sort of giggly and close right from the beginning. Remember, uh, Lucy was looking or uh, Winona Ryder, uh, Mina was looking at that like sexy book. I don't know if it was like the 101 nights or a thousand one nights. Yes. What is it? Yeah. Yeah. Arabian nights or whatever. And it's just like, you know, it has, you know, those drawings in it. Scandalous. Lucy though. My God. When those guys show up to dinner, especially the American guy, the Texan, she just goes up to him. Oh, it's so big. And she like pulls out his knife, like his, <laughs> <laughs> out of his holster. They just, they just can't, they can't keep it to themselves in this world. No, no, no self restraint. No, but the, the 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 sneaking of kisses or whatever in the hedge maze, I always kind of just attributed that to like the Dracula power that made him go out there in the first place, just made him horny, so they were kissing, or maybe they just did that off screen anyway. I don't fucking know. I think they were just doing that all the time to pass the time in between takes. <laughs> oh, like Winona Ryder and Sadie Frost were just <laughs> decided to kiss anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and there's however many cameras in the garden are like, well, that's going in. <laughs> um, I hate to be totally crude, but like, can we talk about Lucy fucking the werewolf? Like, <laughs> you, mean, you mean Lucy fucking the guy in the werewolf costume they got from the party store? No, it, they, they didn't pick that up from Party City. That was like an Oscar. Th By the way, this movie won Oscars for costuming. That means that was an Oscar winning wolf man who fucked. Sadie Frost. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, it, you know what? It was something out of like when you'd buy like quote unquote real porno, like when pornos were actually movies on actual tapes, it would be called the wolf man comes like C U M S or whatever, like stuff like that. That's what that scene was out of. Unlike today when we just have Bram Stoker's Dracula, the porno or like it's overwatch. Let's call it over snatch or something. It's like something very uncreative. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, that scene was great. I remember. Okay. When I first got this on Blu-ray, I got home late from work because I went to work. I went to the store. I got, I picked up a few movies, including that I came home. I was tired and I don't usually put on movies when I'm tired. Cause I don't, like to fall asleep during them, but I just did. I just wanted to see it so bad. I fell asleep very shortly in and I woke up at the Wolfman fucking. I was <laughs> opening my eyes and really confused. And I was like, what the hell is this? I forgot what movie I had put on and I forgot that was in the movie. <laughs> did I put it on the Wolfman comes? <laughs> yeah. Did I actually put on the Wolfman comes again? Um, <laughs> But but anyway, besides like the actual sex and like and you know breasts and stuff, this movie like when when Dracula takes hold of of Mina or Lucy, they writhe around in bed moaning because apparently that's what you do when Dracula has dominion over you. 
you just you writhe around like you are you are on the edge of orgasm at any second. The whole movie was oozing sexuality in a way that we just had never seen in Dracula. No, <laughs> no, there was nothing quite like this before or even really since in Dracula, because even motherfucking Anthony Hopkins, he did Silence of the Lambs the year before and then Bram Stoker's Dracula 92. He's another actor, capital A, and he chews into the scenery. And it's very particular here, because as we went over, everyone's horny. <laughs> and Helsing, across all these adaptations, is traditionally you're not that horny. He's the holier-than-thou <laughs> friend who found porno in the woods, and he's trying to keep real cool about it. But And, he's, and he starts off that way here, too. But once he... Once they go into the uh, poorly lit lecture hall and they indicate to him that, hey, there might be some vampires, his pants might as well be down after that. <laughs> he plays it so, like, almost sort of whimsical, almost sort of like, imagine if, uh, what's his name, um, uh, Django Unchained, uh, also... Um, and Glorious Bastards. He's in a couple Tarantino movies. He won Oscar. Uh, Christoph Waltz. Imagine yeah. if Chris, imagine if Christoph Waltz was Van Helsing. Like he'd play it almost in a very similar manner for anyone who has never seen this movie. Like it would be the same. <laughs> and I'm just saying one year later, he, he was knighted after the one year after this. So maybe it was because <laughs> of this i mean <laughs> not silence of the lambs it was for it was for dracula <laughs> it could be it could be for two things <laughs> i like the part he was just so weird i like the part where uh someone i don't know they're outside they're trying to figure out what's going on and someone i forget who maybe the texan was like so someone or something just came by sucked all the blood out of her and then left and he's like yeah why not <laughs> it's like, Okay, yeah, that happens every day. <laughs> like, uh, he's he's incredible. Perfect. He's acting circles around Winona whenever they have to share screen time. By the way, everyone shits on Keanu for this movie. Winona Ryder isn't that great either. Like, she's not bad, but she's she. This is I've never been a Winona person. I don't really get the appeal. But. In this movie, she's not that great either. Just just to put that out there. I've seen her in worse, but she's not terrific here. It's a it's a it's an old man Hopkins a vehicle, and that's fine. I um I do like when he burned her with the communion wafer on the forehead. <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> just like the cartoony sizzle or whatever yeah. of it. <laughs> My um, biscuits are burning. <laughs> Um, I kind of said this earlier, but I want to reiterate, it is very strange how this movie completely dispenses with mystery because they just assume either you've read the book or you just know who Dracula is and you do know who Dracula is. But like, like I said, Keanu just shows up at the castle. Dracula's just standing right there. No buildup at all. No like thunderclap or like he appears in a shadow. No, he's just standing there in his large ass red robe. And then we don't even spend a whole lot of time on the spooky castle shit. Because that's like one fourth of this movie. That's over in like 30 minutes. And then we never see that stuff again. Most Dracula movies would make the castle stuff the entire movie, but not Francis Ford Coppola, I guess. Jesus Christ. Well, it's a bit weird. Coppola made this movie in an attempt to make money back from earlier movies. And he turned down the opportunity to use early CG as the cost cutting measure. So I think this was more about trying to, you know, maybe save money. Maybe we didn't want to spend too much time in a castle. Maybe because like the outside stuff would be a lot less expensive to shoot and like the asylum stuff and surely. But I guess so. But I don't it feels like he didn't want to use CG like maybe he could have, especially for like some of the intro. Like I said, it would made that stuff a lot easier on him. But this is kind of a movie that you watch because of its craftsmanship and costuming and stuff. So I feel like that would have taken away from that. I feel like he knew that on some level. I was reading an interview the other night and he was assigned a visual effects team. He fired them because they were they just kept suggesting, oh, let's just computer this shit in. Oh, OK. And he said no. And then he hired his son, Roman, to who is an illusionist to 
help fill in with all a lot of these details. And as we went over before, there was a lot of fucking work that went into this to make it <laughs> for what was just supposed to be a money making crowd pleaser. There's that green mist. That shit was quadrupled exposed at times. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the green mist also made Mina horny. It just steals through your window and then it goes, it crawls up to your body and maybe other parts too. And just, you know, again, makes you writhe around in bed horny, that green mist. That was that was super duper exposed. That almost looked like animated colorized. You know what I mean? Like colorized after the fact. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it could have been. I, I mean, I tried looking into that, but it, they just said they... They exposed the film for at, le- at least three to four times a good chunk of the time. I'm like, okay, oh, like okay, it sure looks like it in a good way. And then that way, I kind of feel like we're looking at the here in '92, we're looking at the la- one of the last gasps for for this sort of thing in the uh, gothic horror movie space before you know green screen really came into vogue. Let me actually, I I felt this way about this era of movies. For a while, I'm going to try to articulate this. It's something I've always thought about, but you let me know how, how, how you feel about what I'm saying here. So early 90s, like you just said, there was a lot of gothic shit, right? There was like the crow. There was like, I don't know, like this movie, Dracula. Obviously, there's Batman Returns. Yes, I know there's Batman 89, but Batman Returns was also 1992. So, you know, you have that. There's even like sillier shit, like either like Death Becomes Her or Adam's Family or whatever, right? There's a lot of that, like either whether it's humorous or stuff like this. And then the budgets of movies at this time was like getting starting to get way up there. But it was also still before the advent of CG. So you had this little period where you had high budgets, but not com- no computers or very little computers. And... That made for incredibly lavish set design and like costuming and location shooting and like trickery because that's what you were spending the money on and not computer artists. The results were really special, I think. And there's the only those movies look that way at that time, and we'll probably never see something like that again. This is not to lament CG. I don't lament green screens. I don't lament the way we make movies nowadays. I'm not that kind of person. Steve is a little bit. I am not. Okay, so I don't want to put it out there like, oh, boy, they should have made Sin City with like real sets or it. I mean, I think that's silly, right? At the same time, these movies from the early 90s look the way they do. I was just using the goth stuff as an example. But like, think about Hook. Hook is like the perfect example of what I'm talking about. This was just a perfect storm for all of that. It was. And by the time we get to like the end of the 90s and we get and like Tim Burton is making uh, Sleepy Hollow. By the way, we should watch Sleepy Hollow sometime. Um, I think it, I saw five minutes of that when Fox, of all people, had it. For, and, then, you know, that was edited for TV. Oh, that movie's rated R as hell. You can't show that on TV. <laughs> um, that mo- that moment was gone by the time we got there. Right. We already the Matrix was also in 1999. Right. That made Sleepy Hollow look like, you know child's play so yeah i just i just like this early 90s period of movies steve i guess i was gonna throw it to you but it seems like you already agree you know you know exactly what i'm talking about here oh yes sorry (laughs) i keep ruining it for everybody (laughs) but 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 yes we we, that that was the perfect storm for all those movies and i am a little harsher on green screen than that than uh andre is just at me in the comments section that, that we don't have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could. I mean, people, we could tell people you can cuss us out on if you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and we'll read it on the air. You can say whatever you want, except like racial slurs or whatever. And yeah, don't, uh, don't do racial slurs. Come on. Yeah, don't, 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 don't get crazy. You don't say anything crazy, but. So, you know. We've already been over uh, all the, this great monster movie, right? It it uh, made all this money. It, it probably won some awards. So why aren't we talking about this every year, every October? Like, hey, guys, remember, remember when? Every year? It's not what audiences wanted. That's kind of what I said at the beginning. 
Francis Ford Coppola made this movie for like commercial reasons. Like you said, he would he needed some hits for his company that was like failing. But he made this like no action in this movie didn't even like chop up a few werewolves or demon bats or anything like like it's an action movie. Not that it needs to be Blade before Blade like but I figured it might be sort of like a classy action movie sort of and there's nothing like that and then the dracula stuff is more horny and weird than like "Ah, ah, ah, i want to suck your blood not that people wanted like the classic 60s or 50s shit right or even 30s but i'm sure this is not what people most people wanted unless you're us no but it did have a bit of a legacy though right and i mean there was that brief period where uh Dracula in the red coat and the penis hair became <laughs> Dracula, quote unquote, for a few years. Even like on the Simpsons Halloween special, the that year or the next year, when they go to Burns's haunted manor in Pennsylvania, that that's the Dracula they went with. They didn't go with the the classic Bill Lugosi version. And then there was Mel Brooks's Dead and Loving It, which I oh, saw about boy. fifteen minutes of and turned off. So. <laughs> guys we might have to circle back to that one but at, oh, back in no. 2010 when i saw it, it 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 didn't even it didn't even survive netflix and chill back in 2010 when i tried so <laughs> take 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 that how you will uh, oh we're i mean look this has already been a horny podcast i think there's no problem to mention uh netflix and chill um yeah i remember an snl skit at the time where like Dracula, it was like from the same time period. It was from the early 90s, but I don't know if it was like spoofing that movie or just doing the Dracula thing because it was popular. But I remember bats were definitely having off screen sex. So that's all I remember from that skit. (laughs) Um, We got to take a break. We'll be right back. We'll come back with even more Dracula. Okay, we are back. We sucked each other's blood. What happens if a vampire sucks another vampire's blood? You know, I've never seen it come up. I don't know. Maybe the universe will create a black hole or something. That just cannot be. Yeah, like, you know, when two falcon punches collide. Oh, boy. That's what happens then. They just like they just cancel each other, right? Just tap. Well, no, that's the end of the known universe. Yeah, but what happens in the game? Doesn't it just like they don't punch each other? They just sort of like. I've never actually seen it happen. I feel like you don't actually hit each other. I feel like anytime I've tried it, one always inevitably lands before the other. So, Mm, okay. I feel like in Brawl, they would like tink off each other. But that was obviously two games ago. And that one didn't even have Dracula in it. Well, no, I wish it did. So we also watched dracula 1979 this is a movie i didn't even know existed until like a few years ago because if we talk about nobody talking about dracula 92 i've never heard of this steve like until very recently i have heard of it i haven't seen it 1979 is this weird black hole of a period for me where there were three fucking Dracula movies that came out this year. I thought you were going to say when you weren't born. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> Where I wasn't born yet. And I've seen and not only that, but I, I've been I caught up on Netflix and other things over over my time. And I haven't seen this. V- Werner Herzog put out Nosferatu, the vampire with a Y. Oh, God. I always think it's so cheesy when they spell vampire with a Y. <laughs> okay, but you know what? He's a filmmaker with a capital F, and he's from, not from here, so he, he gets to do that. I guess. And this was a foreign movie, so no one was actually keeping track of 
you know, how much that cost or made or whatever that might have like ended up in a few art houses here. But then there was love at first bite. And that was a comedy and that cost considerably less to make it 3 million and pulled in almost 44 million. But what about 79? What did that, what about 79 that cost 12 million to make and 31 million made 31. And in the end, universal was not happy. Well, no, they wouldn't be happy with that. By the way, universal, there's they're still in the monster game in 1979. I didn't really think that was still a thing. They're still clinging on to the monster game today. If you go to the theme park and to uh, I, I always want to call it Main Street, but I know it's something else there. You could still see a monster or two walking down there. <laughs> yeah, I know they still do the universal monsters, particularly like Dracula and Frankenstein, like around the park or whatever. But like as for like making the movies and especially like sort of like aging them up is is weird by the way i was also not born in 1979 audience okay i'm older than steve but not not that old wink but speaking of aging it up dracula 92 horny bloody saucy rated r right dracula 79 is also rated r so this made me wonder if it was the first Dracula adaption to be rated R. And the earliest I could find was something called Scars of Dracula from 1970. Something else I have never heard of, Steve. I got no idea what this is. Yeah. So there's a few grisly things in 79, such as like the torn out throat, you know, like when they first discovered the, the capsized boat. Um, there was a dead baby that looked a lot more like a cabbage patch doll. Someone dropped in some ketchup. I mean, that didn't look that real, but I mean, it, it was a dead baby. Um, there was a savage snapping of Renfield's neck in this version by Dracula, like absolutely brutal. Yeah, but there, there was no PG 13 back then. So even if it did exist, this movie wouldn't have gotten it. It would still be rated R. It's just, I guess I just think it's funny that like we have two Dracula movies that are 13 years apart that are rated R and they're both very different levels of R. Well, well, I, I think that's a little allowed because, OK, let's just talk about Dracula himself. Frank Ligella is our Dracula today. Unlike Oldman, he had stage experience in the role beforehand in a more straightforward adaptation of the play. No, because. I live in New York. Hey, oh, whatever. I'm walking over here. It's the my, my, it's the S and the S, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mama. My, my dad had a had an anecdote from when he saw the play when I had the DVD as borrowed from my local public library on the counter. From when he saw the play, wherein he's he's very good. He was very good. And they're getting to the end where they're ready to kill Dracula. They're, and this is in the castle. It's very important to note that this play is in the castle, unlike where we end up in this movie. And right at the pivotal moment, a lady shouts out, No, don't do it. He's too beautiful. You don't understand it. <laughs> and everyone on the stage just drops character and can't stop laughing oh my god even even frank himself raises an arm out of the coffin and just goes uh, uh, don't that, up it on the nose that <laughs> is that is excellent which it's which brings me to how we how he is in this movie it's more subdued to Oldman, and it's fine because here he's more nice looking weirdo, charming, who doesn't get out of the house too much, more than the guy who's trying to trick you into his weird sex cult. And both of those are parts of Dracula's history, but it's more standard ish here, but not so hammy like uh, Bela Lugosi, even. Yeah, uh, like we said before, that's always going to be like the standard Dracula to us and with good reason, you know, like even go to like D Darkstalkers Dimitri. That's like very Bela Lugosi, right? Yeah. yeah. So it, that's always going to be the standard for Dracula. But this Dracula, 
I thought was great. He, Frank Lagella is excellent here. In the beginning parts, I wasn't really that sold on him with the scenes of the family, you know, like, oh, doing his little Jedi mind tricks, you know what I mean? Ooh, you have a headache. Oh, now I can cure you. Uh, <laughs> but soon after that, he becomes very cold and calculating and uh, cocksure because Dracula, like, it's a very fun approach to it, and it stands in complete contrast to Gary Oldman in a great way. Like, I think just to, I mean, not I mean, I know this this movie came out first, obviously, just contrasting and comparing. I would say that I like his performance a lot. Did you like that? Our uh, John Harker in this movie giving him the stink eye while he danced with Lucy with his 70s mustache like with <laughs> he was not he was not happy at all. <laughs> like they just kept cutting to him. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole thing we need to get through with there but something you were pointing out to me just a short while ago they actually played a bit more with the dracula lore right here well yeah because they did a lot more of the classic stuff like like i was thinking about in dracula 92 they don't do anything like they have the cross like anthony hopkins as van helsing has the cross and he sort of repels uh, Dracula sometimes, right? They have that in this movie too, but they also do such things as, as like the garlic and the sage too. Remember this Van Helsing in this version, how, you know, repelled him with the sage. And that's yeah, that's not in 92 at all. You like when they're in the graveyard and Dracula's coming by on his horse to pay his respects and he's not scared by the cross for whatever reason, but then he, he just happens to have some clothes of garlic on him and that's like wigging him out of pain. Yeah, he's <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Go away. Shoo. Like like he's a cat or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. Stay out of the cat box. Stay out. <laughs> Get out of here, garlic. Um <laughs> did you um is am, I, am I making this up or does Dracula also have a thing with silver? That's werewolves. That's werewolves. Okay. That wasn't depicted in either of movies. Okay, silver is werewolves. Yeah, I like that they use the the Dracula stuff. This movie aesthetically. By the way, can I say before we get into this, we were not alive in 79, as we said, but we were alive for 92. The passage of time here seems crazy, even though it's not. It's only 13 years apart. It would be now like if we were comparing a movie from 2009 to another version of it today, which, yeah, 2009 is not that long ago, but it kind of is. It just feels different because we weren't alive. Do you know what I mean? Do you or do you not also feel that way? <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. And if once you do the math, it's not that far apart. But, you know, even even when we were doing this, it's like 79. Oh, we're we're really reaching back with this. one. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it, but- it's like it's like all those posts, you know, you know, 30 years ago. Oh, you mean 1979? No, 1999. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 One of those uh, one of those type of things. But um, anyway, uh, this movie aesthetically. There's two things I want to mention. Can we? I want to start with the castle. Dracula's castle looks fucking incredible. The gothic architecture in there is outrageous. I don't know if they really built this or did this already exist. They probably built it for the movie because who would make an actual place like this? But like great shots too, such as like the overhead when um I guess Lucy or Mina or whoever comes to dinner. I think they swapped them in this movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Um, when she comes to dinner, there's an overhead shot through the spider web and the spider web crawls across as she's walking in. Yeah. That's a great shot. And the dinner scene with the candles placed just so, right? <laughs> well, they had enough candles, right? I mean, holy fuck. They had, there must have been, you know, a price cut after the first thousand candles or something because. <laughs> <laughs> they just sh- bought a, half the budget. What did you say? Twelve million. At least two million was spent on candles. <laughs> Light them up. <laughs> but you agree, right? The architecture of this castle oh, it's was a great castle, and it's good because we keep going in and out of it in this one. Unlike uh, ninety two, where we only spend a little bit of time. Probably should have spent more, but you know that Francis Ford Coppola be who he is. Anyway. This movie also has an interesting wrinkle to it that we discovered after the fact. So when this movie came out, 
it was shot in Technicolor because the studio forced him to. The director, I can't remember his name now, sorry, but he wanted to shoot it in black and white, like a classic monster movie. Studio's like, no. So he shot in Technicolor um, in 1979. And then 1982, the VHS and Laserdisc versions, those were also Technicolor. In 1991, they made like a special Laserdisc version of this movie where they desaturated all the scenes of their color. Not completely to black and white, although in some scenes it is damn near there. <laughs> it might as well be. Yeah, it may as well have been. But Especially there's a, lo- a good chunk of the castle shots. I, I, I was wigging out like, is this in black and white? No, because... You can see little pops of, you know, because the flames are still kind of. Yeah. So that's almost desaturated all the way. The darker stuff is like can be kind of blue toned, like in the cave. That's like practically blue tone. And then there's like some sepia stuff when you're inside, Steve. Yeah. Look, it's I know we're probably might be making it sound unappealing to you people that are afraid of black and white movies, but I think it's great. No, it's great. And I. And then I, because I, we both took notice of this independently, and we went back and to see if that was on purpose, and it was. Uh, that is, I rented this movie to watch on Apple TV. That was the version on there. I don't even know if you can find the Technicolor version now. Yeah, mine was mine was a DVD from two thousand three. So, yeah. So you also not to again what twelve years after nineteen ninety one though, but it feels <laughs> so far apart. <laughs> what even? What even is time? Man, this is thanks weird. a lot, COVID nineteen. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! Can you believe we're coming up on like what? We're gonna be three. The twentieth year, year of COVID nineteen. I can't believe it either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the twentieth year. Anyway, we. I really much prefer what I watch. I compared it to the Technicolor version and some shots from a website, and I really like the the desaturation. I think it it fits. So just one thing, real quick, because I don't know where else I'm gonna say this. I was watching the intro and, you know, by the way, and I'm sure you know this is too. When you watch something on Blu-ray or rented HD, obviously on Apple TV, as I did, the way credits pop now, they look so fucking sharp. Have you noticed that? Because it doesn't blend into yeah. the. Yeah. So, you notice the intro of this movie where it says like Dracula. It's like very, yeah. you know, even I know you're watching a, a you said DVD, right? So even though it was 480p, I'm sure you still. This still popped a bit. Yeah. Yeah. During this intro, I was taking note of the music. I was like, boy, this is a nice dramatic piece or whatever. Whoever did this really understood the the assignment. You know, as soon as I thought that music composed by John Williams popped up on the screen. (laughs) Hey, work is work. All right. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying I wasn't expecting to see that, especially just after I had that thought. So I was like, "Okay, sure. John Williams. Why not? He's in between Star Wars right now. It just it's 1979. He can he can do a Dracula. <laughs> just one though. Just a Dracula. <laughs> oh my god, if he did 92. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, the score in that movie is I- incredible, but you know, and I'm not a score person. I'm not an orchestra person. Everyone knows that. I, even I will say that shit's crazy. I'm ju- I'm just trying to imagine Bram Stoker's Dracula as composed by uh, John Williams, like finding that CD on the shelf and then flipping to the back of it, pl- flipping on the back and looking at the track list, track 11, the werewolf comes. <laughs> <laughs> Exclamation mark, of course. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, guys. But yeah, I alluded to this a little bit earlier. There are three fucking Dracula movies that year in 1979. However, many more released that decade and before this point, I'm there were monster movies playing on TV all the fucking time. So there had to be some sort of Dracula fatigue going on at this point. But we couldn't help but circle back to it as a storytelling society again and again, especially the traditional variant of it where we visit England for at least a little while. Why Why do, why, why might you think that is under? I, I don't know. I was thinking of, this is a roundabout answer, but I think it'll answer it anyway. I was thinking of this while watching 79 is that I'm sure Bram Stoker never intended it this way. And when it was, I read in 1894, but Today, Dracula almost reads as an attack on the naivety of the rich, like literally eat the rich. (laughs) 
Like absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because like no normal person with any amount of street smarts would ev- would not know something is up with Dracula. They would know he's maybe not necessarily evil, but they would be like, OK, that dude is there's something right. These rich people, though, they're just going to sell them this spooky house. This variant in particular, they're unlike uh, 92. These guys are a bit more uh, conservative sexually and just (laughs) in general. I don't I don't know. There was that scene where like John Harker and like. I don't know. She, Mina or Lucy or whatever is on her knees. They're outside. I don't know. They cut. They just cut to them all of a sudden. It's like, was she just giving him a blowjob? Like, what the hell is going on? Here? Well, yeah, but they're, <laughs> they're 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 hiding it more. There's remember there's that part in the intro where they're like trying to sneak that kiss in the car and uh, Van Helsing, which is who is now her dad because you know casting. Yeah, is Mina like, is now a Van no, Helsing. No, leave room for Jesus or whatever he's, the, the, the <laughs> turn of the century version of that was. Yeah. And, but but you know you know Dracula is the wealthy guy that moves into town with unseen power. He's and he's threatening the status quo by, you know, complimenting your wife. <gasps> Scandalous! Oh, <wow. laughs> and, and you know, it's it's that exaggerated look of when society is set on its ways. And you know we won't, and it doesn't look forward. Dracula is a threat. I'm not about to do the hashtag Dracula was right campaign, but <laughs> Dracula did nothing wrong. <laughs> Dracula did nothing wrong. But you know, be, because society resists change at large, those who are less agreeable to the status quo are more inclined to try anything new, even when this new guy lives in the dank castle, keeps bats, and is a fucking vampire. <laughs> Like very clearly, man. Like it's just amazing. It this this can only happen to rich people being this naive. It is like the purge of the 1800s. Now is what you I mean. You know the purge, those horror movies, where you know for 12 hours you get to do whatever you want or whatever. Like <laughs> this wouldn't happen to like a uh, you know, but to uh, you know Bob Cratcher from A Christmas Carol, right? Right? You know he's on his way home. I want to suck your blood. Uh. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but they're I like, I don't know Ooh. what you're, I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're selling, but I can't afford it. <laughs> um, real quick, you know how like in Dracula 92, Keanu totally had 90s hair. Like in this movie, everyone has 70s hair. Like I can't get over John Harker. Like he looks like he is ready to go to the disco. Like that feathered hair. That mustache, come on. That is 1979. That is a bit much, yeah. <laughs> but the, the <laughs> not, women. Not even a bit much, but just, yeah, it, it does put it in the time. We did talk a little about how this movie is a lot more toned down sexually compared to 92 because of what isn't. But that scene where, I guess you could call it the turning scene where Dracula steals into a room for the second time. And like the, that red light behind them, like floodlight sort of coming through their silhouettes of their bodies, presumably <laughs> naked. Oh my God. They got those bats from the party store. <laughs> I mean, they did. And like, they got that red light from the skating rink too, because like that shit was like incredible. That is the most 1979 thing about that movie was that I red was light. Say that, that is Dracula 79 as shit. <laughs> yeah. One more thing I really enjoyed about, such a uh, Dracula and Mina scenes as or Lucy again. I keep mixing them up in this movie. It really doesn't matter. It just really doesn't. Nope. <laughs> I, I, the first time he steals into a room with the mist and everything. Oh yeah. I like that. Dracula had the mist. There was definitely no mist in 92. Well, there was the green mist. Yeah. Well, but that, that wasn't like, that was horny mist. That wasn't like Dracula mist. No, you're right. Yeah, that was like that was orgasm mist. Um, when, <laughs> when he steals into her room and then like she sees Dracula and she just immediately starts unbuttoning her nighty like instantly. It's like whoa, like Dracula is Dracula has it, man. In Dracula ninety two though, that thing would have blown clean off her body. Like she would have been like naked, right? <laughs> so like, and that's another reason why this R doesn't feel like the same rated R as like ninety two. By the way, wouldn't it have been funny if like during that silhouette scene or whatever, Dracula just stood up in the silhouette and you just see a big boner just boing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> silhouette of a boat. <laughs> uh. Uh, but no, they were they were pressed together, so you didn't see any silhouettes of body parts. There was one aspect of Dracula 79 that was in 92, but it didn't really need to be there. It could have just been cut completely and it wouldn't matter. It was the the asylum stuff. But this really characterized this version. Yeah, I I brought it up earlier. We, we had the weirdo who was all, I was promised immortality. And we didn't really. And that's, you know, he hides the boy toy there. And that's kind of it for the asylum. And in that way, the asylum does the same thing here. Someone's acting out of line too much. We say they're nuts and we throw them in there. And it does serve that role here, too. But. Because everything is more repressed, it's it, the asylum becomes important that way. So it becomes time to lock up Mina or Lucy. I forget. <laughs> I think that's just. I think that's just going to be on purpose. They just have everyone on the fucking cast list come by for a visit on one side of the bars or the other. I feel like they spend a good amount of time walking through this place and having however many hands reaching through bars trying to get out. That's what I wanted to say, though, the chaos of it, the chaos of those scenes. There's extras all over the place. Everyone's yelling and screaming most of the time or excitable in general, right? The chaos, it would felt not claustrophobic, but it you felt it in those scenes. And there was quite a few of them. Uh, absolutely. But especially that last one when they need to go uh, talk to Lucy or Mina, you know, the one the one that lived. And is, you know, starting to turn. And uh, they're like, okay, I, I, I got a way we can solve this problem. But I'm going to have to go in alone. And, of <laughs> course, he, he, he treats this with all the reverence he deserves, it deserves by going in and, you know, trying to make you do a blow, blow job. D- but then, didn't John Harker go in there? It's like, I'll talk to Lucy and or Mina or whatever. And then she started coming <laughs> on to him and he's just like, OK, well, let's just do it right here. And then they just but like <laughs> her dad now Van Helsing just busts in there <laughs> like, OK, I guess we're not doing that. Prison, then there's a fucking prison riot. Yeah, the, these these ca- the, the, these prison uh, asylum scenes, whatever, are very chaotic in a in a great way. And, and then even the freaking butler from that's like just standing in the corner from that opening dining scene is like killing it like is like putting down a few guys and then none of that really matters because dracula comes in and steals her away anyway <laughs> i do you like the reverse shot of like the mist going into the door clearly obviously was coming out of the door but yeah 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 i noticed i mean like uh, that's a very obvious movie trick but i like that they even in 1979, they didn't feel like that was too stupid to do. I, I do like that they did that. No, that's that's allowed. Okay. You're, unfortunately, I'm sorry about this. You're going to have to explain the ending to me. Because it didn't make any fucking sense. Like, they could have had a great showdown at the castle, the cool castle. But they chased Dracula onto that boat and then... Van Helsing says to Seward, he's like, you stay here in case they are not on board. Keep well, bye. And then like he's out of the movie now. (laughs) So they get on the boat. Van Helsing dies for no reason because he hesitated to stab his mortal enemy. He's been researching for decades, even though he's sleeping right there in the coffin. He didn't do it. So now he's dead. And then they gore Dracula in the back of the back, like back of the neck, I guess, with a hook. And raise him up to the rafters and fry him in the sunlight while he thrashes around. Great scene, by the way. You explained it very well. It's very silly, of course, because, you know, the movie ends where it begins, right? And and on the ship where where, where they found him, I guess, or on a ship, because that was technically a shipwreck. So I guess that's a different ship. It's a different ship, but what I need explaining is... Dracula then okay like gets away I guess like his cape flies away like yeah and then and she's even looking away like yeah Dracula you could do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> well like John Harker is just standing over there and it's like boy I feel like a cuck right now like I am just <laughs> you know like, what I like, mean? The, like there might as well have been a caption floating that they said Dracula 79 will return in Dracula 1981. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dracula's <but>. bitches. <laughs> yeah. 
I would do a lot of things to see a movie called Dracula's Bitches, especially from 1981. Okay, have you seen Frank Lagella today? Because when I was looking in to see how many of these people are still alive, he's he's 83 now, and he still looks like he's gotten pussy. Yeah, oh, dude, he's getting, he's living it up. He has to be. Oh, he, good for him. He he is. Yeah, I did see him because I did also look to see if he was still alive. And the picture they have on Wiki is only from a few years ago. And yeah, good. Good for him. I'm glad. I honestly, though, I really think that's why he was such a good Dracula. He was probably look, you got to be a certain type to be play that character that way. And he did it. So, you know, I'm just saying, like, it's not a surprise. But yeah, so that was just weird. Everyone dies unnecessarily on the boat or gets dismissed from the movie and then it's over. So it's like, okay. And then John Harker is just left sitting there holding the bag, I guess. I, whatever. But the way all those that makeup and other prosthet- prosthesis, prosthesis peels off his face and when he's burning off the sun makes all of that worth it. And I'm willing to ignore all of those other stupid <laughs> little plot points because of how awesome that looks. It was fucking great. And he played, like I said, he played it great. It's not easy to play dead like that, especially when you're like, you know. But he's not really dead because Dracula's Bitches is coming out in two years. <laughs> the studio the studio that initially made this isn't going bankrupt at all. <laughs> <laughs> Universal definitely balked on Dracula's Bitches. I think I just love Dracula movies, honestly. That doesn't mean I love everyone, and I definitely don't want to watch some goofy shit like Dead and Loving It. You're trying to weasel out of watching Dead and Loving It. I don't. I, there is nothing worse than bad comedy. It is the worst. Mel Brooks quit doing movies after Dead and Loving It. Like, <laughs> I'm sure that was for a reason. <laughs> so come on. It can't be any good. No. Uh, what did you think overall? No, I, I I thought it was a little dull at points. and Maybe it was just a, a bad night for me to watch it, but... Honestly, this felt like the logical conclusion to the traditional Dracula movie template that we've come accustomed to. Well, not we, but, you know, the audience had come accustomed to over the decades before they exaggerated everything with Bram Stoker's. And that's good. I, I, I liked it. Maybe that's why we haven't seen an honest attempt in 30 years since Bram Stoker's, huh? Because. Yeah. yeah. I mean, guys, there's been what? Dracula 2000 and <laughs> Dracula Untold, which I haven't Ugh, seen, but that movie Andre sucks. tells me is just a history movie with two seconds of Dracula in it. Yeah, it's a his, it's a it's a Vlad the Impaler war movie that's PG-13, so you don't really get any cool action. And then it's like there's two seconds of, I guess, a Nosferatu type figure. And he was great. Whoever did that was excellent. But that's like a tenth of this movie. So don't go seeing it for that. So, so, I mean, there's, you know, that other, you know, nagging question. Will we ever see a classic Dracula in this vein again? And sadly, I'm inclined to just give it that knee jerk reaction of no, because I I feel like someone is going to look at Bram Stoker's think that's the template to work off of and not the exception. And they'll miss the mark of why that was ever likable. Yeah, I'm not sure that anyone would try to do that particularly. I don't know. It's tough because whenever we reach back to that era of like, you remember Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter from like 10 years ago? I didn't see it, but I remember it. It wasn't that good. Like I wanted it to be more. Yeah. I wanted it to be more fun, but think about that. That's a great title, right? That's such a great premise. That movie should be like fun and like having fun with that premise. Remember what was it? Uh, Cowboys and aliens. Remember that? That was, that sucked because they played it so seriously, but it's a movie called Cowboys and aliens. That was a movie called Cowboys and aliens but it should be fun and it's not. I feel like that's what's going to happen if they make a new Dracula movie. I feel like they're going to make it so like Dracula 92 is fun in a lot of ways, 
and and sexy <laughs> and horny. This is a new one is not going to be that. Yeah, any any attempt to do this sort of Dracula would be too far up its own ass. Yeah. Okay, we got to ask since we're doing this, who would you want to be Dracula today? Like if if they were to make such a movie. I have a couple of suggestions and I want to hear yours. I think Adam Driver would be a great Dracula. He's tall. He's like, he has a, I know it's going to sound weird, but he has the right kind of face. I think you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's almost like cheating. <laughs> no, I think Idris Elba is cheating. Like, he would be so good at Dracula, like, he would be too good at Dracula. You know what I mean? Like, he would be so ridiculously good. It'd be like, I cannot take you right now, Idris Elba, as Dracula. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Adam Driver, I really think he could be that sort of it, watching Frank Lagella's Dracula made is the reason why I think he can be, do that. He could do that sort of cold. I mean, look, you can say what you want about Star Wars. I think the best part of the new trilogy was Kylo Ren and the way not just the character, but the way he played it. It was, you know, he's you're complicated to a in new, a way you're talking to a new trilogy like her, so i'm inclined to agree with you i i like it too i'm just saying you know I, I you you see what i mean though since you like those movies don't you think that sort of demeanor can fit dracula oh yeah it, it, it can but as we've been over you know we're just imagining we, we we will just have to imagine him standing there with his long luxurious hair and long luxurious cape just staring you down in his long luxurious castle with his uh, <laughs> bisexual relationships this that dracula wouldn't be afraid to uh, have sev- many partners of <laughs> different <laughs> different types including john harker this time <laughs> john harker john harker's brother john harker's <laughs> other brother <laughs> i think you're going to say john harker's dad <laughs> <laughs> hey, why not? Hey, I'm sure I'm sure he'd be open to it. <laughs> um, I've always thought of Julius Belmont to essentially be Van Helsing, and I guess other people do as well. But I've never made a Jonathan Harker connection with anyone in Castlevania. So who would it be like a John John Morris, Jonathan Morris? I'm thinking of would Bloodlines, it? but I think I'm confusing myself with Portrait of Ruin. John John Morris or Jonathan Morris? Are they both a Morris? Yeah, they were Morris and Morris and Morris. It, yeah, I think that I, I remember Morris and Circle the Moon for sure. Nathan Graves, though, I think is the main. I think there is a Morris, though, in Circle of the Moon. Yes, right? Graves was the main in Circle of the Moon. But I think the guy that's like, ah, I'm better than you was a, was Morris. Yeah, it was also a Morris. Anyway, that's but, but I but I would just I would honestly think it would be Christopher or Soleil from the Adventures games because, you know, they were dracula's patsies half the time and that's kind of the role he serves i know it's a fairly straightforward answer but i guess so but julia julia spellmont is definitely van helsing oh yeah no no fun at all <laughs> <laughs> but, but big dick energy oh yeah who who would you want who who would play dracula in your ideal world do you have anybody I don't know. I kind of like your answers that make that make my answer kind of stupid. Now I'm like, I kind of like Tom Hardy, but Tom Hardy. Yeah. Okay. He's he's he's. Uh, I I, guess, I mean I guess he's not as interesting as your guys, but I guess that's. Uh, I, I guess I had more uh, 79 than 92 in that regard. Not sexy outright, but more going for that more intriguing angle. <laughs> I can't picture it, though it could be one of those things where you'd have to see it in action. Like, sometimes you can't picture a person being a role until you really see no, it. No, I, got, so I, I gotta say, I like your choices better. <laughs> I mean, okay, but, like, I wouldn't – I'm all I'm saying is that, like, I'm not dismissing Tom Hardy out of hand. I don't – I think what it is for me is that I've only seen him as Mad Max or, like, you know – venom or whatever like that's or whatever he is in venom i he's not venom but i i know it's i know it's all it's been a decade and we still can't shake bane or he talks <laughs> like this <laughs> this is a wrecking, my man. <laughs> i like the bane voice people like to talk shit i i no, i thought it was great <laughs> yeah um anyway i think that's enough draken 
for today? Draken? Is that a verb? Have you ever dracked? We, we, we've been dracking this on long enough. <laughs> I, I see you that, and I'll raise you one other thing before we get out of here. You know what I just now realized? Right here. I'm going to make an admission to the audience. Draki from Dragon Quest? I never thought about the fact that it's a bat. It's called Draki, Dracula. You, I you never, didn't. I literally Ow. never put that together till now. The base ones are a black or very dark blue. How, how did you not? I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I never thought about it till right now. They're called Draki. I know that. Okay. <laughs> God, I just, I'm telling you, I told you I was making an admission. Okay. Don't make me feel bad. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> now I'm leaving. I'm going to pout. Uh, uh, Fine Time Podcast on Twitter. Guys, go to the bio of Fine Time Podcast on Twitter to find us, to follow us on Twitter as well. You could also look in the description of this podcast to follow us on Twitter as well as the show at Fine Time Podcast. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Put on your speaking voice, motherfucker. Putting on that speaking voice, motherfucker.